Sam Adams, head football coach at Hillcrest High School. And he has the honor, along with Chris Smelly from ACA, of having two SEC football signees from right here in Tuscaloosa County. Hillcrest running back Brian Robinson inked this morning with Alabama. And, of course, ACA will have a SEC signee this afternoon as their long snapper will be going to Auburn University. Coach Sam Adams is with us right now. Good morning, Coach. Good morning. Thanks for having me on. Glad to have you. Quite a quite a day over there at Hillcrest High School. Brian Robinson, who had committed to Alabama, uh, made it official this morning, signing with the, the Crimson Tide. We've we visited about him several times, but uh, you know to play running back in the SEC, particularly at a school like Alabama, which has had a lot of great ones, you got to be a pretty special football player. Uh, absolutely. You know, he's really got a, a complete skill set or a well-rounded skill set, I should say, coming out of high school. I mean, he's uh, he's obviously very talented with the ball in his hand uh, in, in the backfield. Uh, he's a good pass receiver. Uh, we played him in the slot just a little bit, and uh, he's a good good guy catching screens out of the backfield also. And then he uh, he, he protects the passer really well, too. So he's, he's got a really well-rounded skill set coming out. We've got crews all over the place this morning. I'm here at the radio station, obviously talking to you. But uh, I mentioned that uh, you know you got Brian Robinson, ACA has Bill Taylor, a uh, long snapper that's uh, signing with Auburn this afternoon to have an SEC football signee um, is a big deal for for a high school, isn't it? I mean, that's not something that you take for granted. You don't have one every year. That's right. Uh, and at Hillcrest, I mean, we're fortunate enough to have two come out of here in the last uh, four years. Uh, you know, in addition to Brian. Uh, we have Keith Holcomb, Keith Holcomb. also on the uh, on the roster. I think you'd be hard pressed to find any one high school anywhere that has two guys on uh, on the roster of, of a team that's comparable to Alabama. And so that's something we take a great deal of pride in. I think it really talks to how strong our our community is. Because in order to get to that level, uh, you got to have a good support system around you. That's that's teachers, administrators, coaches. Family at home, uh, you got to have support from from all angles in order to get to that level, and and we're uh, we're fortunate to live in such a great community over here. Coach, I want to ask you about the the mental makeup of Brian Robinson, the confidence factor, because uh, you saw it firsthand. I mean, after he committed to Alabama, uh, that doesn't mean that other schools are going to quit recruiting you. And when you look at the fact that they've got Bo Scarborough coming back, and Damian Harris, and Josh Jacobs, and B.J. Emmons, Najee Harris, the number one rated running back in the country, is already enrolled. I'm sure there were a lot of schools that said, "Hey, Brian." You're not going to play at Alabama, but you can come here and play. Um, but he stuck it out, and he he signed with the Crimson Tide. What does that say about him as a young man, and the fact that he doesn't uh, he doesn't back down from a challenge? That's for sure. Yeah. Uh, first off, I mean, it, it says a lot to his character and his loyalty that he gave his word and his commitment. And his recruiting at that point was basically over. Uh, he he didn't really pay a lot of attention to the other schools that would continually come up and try to try to get his attention and, you know, pull him away from Alabama. Uh, in, a, in a day and age where recruiting has become what it is now, and a lot of kids want to kind of play the game and pull hats out of bags and that kind of stuff. Brian was very simple about it. He decided he wanted to go to Alabama, and it was over. And I was very proud of the way that he handled that. Um, in regards to the competition aspect of it, I think any great competitor, Brian being definitely in that category, uh, is not really scared of any kind of competition and understand that competition makes everyone better. And so you know, he's not really concerned about all the names that are on the depth chart ahead of him. Um, you know, with, with his ability and his mental makeup uh, and his, his toughness, I think he can go in and, you know, he may not be the, the number one guy on day one there. No freshman will be. Uh, but I think if, if he goes in and pays his dues, and I think he'll eventually be that number one guy at Alabama. You know, you've got a college coaching background, and then you coached at Hoover, which is, uh, you know, I think no doubt, arguably the top high school program in the state and the way you've helped develop Brian. And I mean, this is a compliment, you know, there could be some high schools where you got a kid that talented and let's be honest, coach, they're just tossing in the ball every play. You know, they're just saying, mm-hmm. go, go win for us. And um, not to mention the wear and tear on his body, but the lack of development you might have when all you do is just, is just give the ball to a talented running back. You've, uh, you've integrated him into the passing game. Mm-hmm. You've, you've made him learn to block. You made him learn to uh, be a team player. You didn't overuse him. Uh, and clearly, he'll go into college now with an understanding of maybe more so than some players at the high school level, what it takes to play at the college level, plus the fact that he didn't suffer from overuse. Just talk about that and the, the way you kind of run your program there. Very similar to the way uh, a college program is run. 
Yeah, absolutely. We try to, to run the program, uh, you know, just like uh, as close as we can to the way it was done at Hoover and and the way that's done at a lot of colleges around the country. Uh, you know, as far as the, the style of offense that he's played in, I mean, we, we run a, a college offense that's just slightly scaled down a little bit. So, you know, like you said, he, he's not – He's not a guy that has had to carry it, uh, you know, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of times coming out of high school and is, is already beat to death by the time he arrives in college. Um, you know, he he got his carries, uh, some of which came in between the tackles on the hard stuff. Some some came on the perimeter with catching the ball, and, and he's really unselfish as a good blocker for, for Cole Frederick and the other backs that we had back there when he was asked to, to do that. Um, and I think he's – Benefited also from being a multiple sport guy, which we encourage at, at Hillcrest. Uh, you know, he was a track athlete as well, and that helped him to become a better running back and helped the top end speed. Um, and you know, I think that's one of the one of the things that we really pride ourselves on at, at Hillcrest, just how we develop kids from the time they come in as ninth graders to the time they get out of here. And the ones that have that that ability to play at the next level, uh, I think they're well trained by the time they get out of here, and they're ahead of where a lot of college freshmen may be that are coming from other programs. No doubt about it. Sam Adams, Hillcrest head coach, our guest on the Bud Light Hotline, presented by Adams Beverages. Uh, he was going to play, talking about Brian Robinson, he was going to play somewhere. There's no doubt about that. But to get the opportunity to play at Alabama for his family, to be able to keep him right here at home and, and go to the games every Saturday, how big a deal is that for the family? Uh, it, was, it was a huge deal. I mean, Brian's mom was very, very important to him. And uh, just – he really evaluated the, a lot of the opportunities that were thrown at him all at one time, uh, you know, over the course of about a month and just came to the realization that, that everything that he wants out of a college program just happens to be six miles down the road from, from where he goes to class every day right now. And so that, that decision was made uh, very quickly and very decisively. And I know uh, he, during that little time span where he was, Considering some other programs, I know his mom was was pro Alabama the whole time, and that's a great opportunity for her to just be able to go down the street every Saturday and watch her son play in the fall. So I'm proud of him and proud of his whole family for that. When you have an SEC recruit, it brings attention to your entire program, and other players sometimes benefit. You mentioned your quarterback Cole Frederick. I, I thought it was um, unique that you tweeted out recently that hey, you know, if you're looking for a big time quarterback, college recruiters. We've got one. Uh, this kid's a winner. Um, you know, he has made plays with his arm, with his legs. He's smart. Of course, we know he's a terrific all-around athlete. What's the latest on, on Cole Frederick as far as is there still a college football possibility out there for him, Coach? There, there are some possibilities out there for him. Uh, it may end up being in a walk-on capacity. That, that's really one of, the, one of the mysteries of this recruiting season uh, for me. And uh, I think some of these schools that are passing him by Right now, we're going to be getting beat by him in the years to come. Wow. Um, so it's a uh, it's still a good possibility out there for him. Um, I know he's been in contact with people in the last few days, and you know, hopefully, hopefully that happens. There's no doubt in my mind that it, you know, he he was the best one in the state this year, regardless of classification or regardless of you know where another kid may be committed. I mean, we we had the best quarterback in the state. How do you think there are that, a lot of opposing coaches that would say that as well? Yeah, and how do you think that happens? I mean, here you are. Obviously, they. College coaches respect your opinion. He's he's done it on the field at the six A level. I know some people are going to talk about his height and the measurables and all that stuff. But but how do, how does that happen? I mean, how do you have a guy that's this productive that gets a ringing endorsement from his head coach that's won a lot of games and he get he gets passed over? I, I'm with you. I don't I don't I just don't see how that happens. It, uh, recruiting at the quarterback position now is a very unique situation. Uh, a lot of times they're on these guys from the time that they're freshmen or sophomores. They've visited and gone to their camps and thrown in person for them several times. And Cole was relatively a late bloomer as a quarterback. He, had a, he started for two years. His junior year he had a good year, but not one of those that would just jump out at you like his senior year. And so he kind of, and, and also uh, he's a big baseball player. And so in the summers he was going playing baseball a lot and didn't get to go to as many – uh, quarterback camps and throw in front of these college coaches as, as he would have liked to, and I think those are the things that are really limiting him. I mean, he's he's six foot one ninety, uh, and that's 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 a legitimate measurement. Uh, so I mean, he, he's he may be smaller than some, but there's there's plenty of guys that are successful at, at six feet tall playing at big time college. How, how about Drew Brees? <laughs> he comes yeah, to absolutely. 
Absolutely. Well, what can... uh, there's there's plenty of them. He's, he's a guy that can run. He can really do it all, and he's a great leader and a great student also. Uh, so somebody's going to be getting a good a good product with Cole Freddie. We just don't know who it's going to be right now. Well, we'll continue to watch that and make sure you let us know when, when he decides what he wants to do. All right, before we wrap it up, Coach, uh, with guys like Cole Frederick and, and Brian Robinson, you've won a lot of games the last couple of years there at Hillcrest. That state championship still eludes you. Of course, uh, uh-huh. once you get to the playoffs in Class 6A, you're playing good people. We know that. But uh, look ahead for me to, to next season. I mean, I know you're losing a lot of good football players, but what do you think uh, about your team coming up in 2017? Yeah, well, I think one of the luxuries that we had this year with the big season we had was our younger guys got to play a lot of football in the second half of the game. And uh, that has really allowed us to develop some more depth uh, that we really didn't have in the years leading up to this. We're playing a lot of close games all year long. Uh, so. You know, we're definitely going to miss Brian and, and Cole and the other. There's five other guys that signed today as well. Uh, we're going to miss all those guys, but we feel like we've got some good ones stepping in right behind them. You know, you're not going to lose those great players without missing them at, at some point. Uh, but we feel like we're going to we're going to pick right up where we left off. Big day at Hillcrest High School. Brian Robinson, Patriots running back, signs with the Alabama Crimson Tide. His head coach Sam Adams joining us here on the program. Thanks so much, Coach, and look forward to seeing you soon. Thank you very much.